Hey everybody, it's Friday, October 9th, 2009. Thanks for stopping by. Got a lot of things to talk about today. I have to go quick. First of all, um, I want to talk about the March on Gaza being planned. Uh, it's uh, marchforgaza.org. Uh, you need to check this out. Man, this is amazing. I can't believe it. Uh, I'm just like a schoolgirl today because uh, I got... Uh, I got some information about this march on Gaza and it's just the most amazing thing and I love it I love it it's uh, being planned for uh, January 1st 2010 and it's got Noam Chomsky it's got Ali Abunima it's got uh, Norman Finkelstein not Finkelstein okay Finkelstein it's got um, George Galloway uh, it's got Code Pink a lot of people from Code Pink. It's got Naomi Klein. It's just got everybody. I mean, uh, well, practically everybody. Uh, you know, almost everybody in that march, or almost all the endorsers in that march, are people that I would love to meet. Uh, if I could be in that march, if there was any possible, humanly possible way I would go, I don't know. I'm going to try. Okay. If I can come up with the money, I'm going to be in Gaza. On, on January 1st marching from the Rafah crossing to Israel with uh, Noam Chomsky just uh, one of my favorite personal heroes and Norman Finkelstein another hero uh, George Galloway man just just all these wonderful people uh, but I might not be able to make it but I'm gonna I'm gonna try uh, and Check out this website, marchforgaza.org, uh, and support them if you can. It's just an amazing thing that they're that they're going to do uh, to bring attention to the siege on Gaza, and it's about time, you know. And, and uh, Code Pink has gone to Gaza, I think, four or five times so far. Uh, they're just doing amazing work. But this idea they came up with, this is an amazing idea, whether or not the Israelis stop them they win they win if they break the siege they win if they don't break the siege it's just brilliant you know all that they have to do is show that it happened and they win they, they you know the, the current regime in Israel just cannot stand up to this there's just no way it's a public relations disaster for them okay uh, so you know check out this website I also want to talk about um, Barack Obama Two important developments with Barack Obama. Um, and first of all, I want to say I'm not a birther. I don't care where Barack Obama was born. I'm not a death paneler. I, I think uh, that, uh, you know, the death panel thing is just a ridiculous uh, farce. Um, I wish we had single payer health care. I wish we had a strong public option, failing that. And there's nothing wrong with either of those choices. You know, don't let anybody fool you. Uh, but we're not going to get that. We're going to get some mandated public, uh, you know, uh, financing of the private health care industry, which is killing 46,000 people a year. You know, you want to talk about death panels, that's death panels. And we're going to get that. Uh, and, you know, and the reason why is because Obama really doesn't give a shit about, uh, you know, uh, making the world a better place. He's just a politician. And the... Republicans are hoping, in their own words, to help Obama put together a disastrous plan and succeed in putting it through Congress so that the people will hate him. You know, it's just it's just playing politics, and, and we're going to be the ones who pay for it, you know, so that the Republican Party, we're going to die so that the Republican Party can be popular again, you know. Thanks a lot, guys. You know, thanks a lot, uh, all you Republicans in Congress and in the Senate. Okay, so, you know, let's get that out of the way. I'm not a birther. I'm not a death paneler. I don't hate Obama. But, um, you know, two important developments. Uh, the uh, Saturday Night Live did a just an awesome sketch about Obama where they said, you know, it was a, um, a public address from the president where he said, you know, everybody thinks I'm a socialist. Everybody thinks I'm taking over the country. But look at the facts. I haven't done anything since I've been president, and it's been almost a year. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's been almost a year, and I haven't done anything. 
you know, and, and that's just brilliant because it's so true. I mean, everybody's so afraid of Obama, the socialist, the communist, you know, the anti-American foreigner, the terrorist, and what has he done? He's not closed Guantanamo. He's not ended the Iraq war. He escalated the Afghanistan war. He hasn't come through on any sort of health care reform as people are dying. He hasn't fixed the economy. He did exactly the same thing that the Republicans were going to do, and that is bail out Wall Street while not providing any help for the people who are actually suffering because of Wall Street. I mean, this guy has so far has been a disaster. He hasn't done anything. He hasn't, you know, of course he hasn't repealed the Patriot Act because he never promised to, you know. Um, and, and like I've said many times before, this election we had a choice for change. We had many choices for change. We had Dennis Kucinich on the left. We had Ron Paul on the right. We had Mike Gravel on the left. We had Cynthia McKinney, who was an awesome, you know, candidate, uh, who is associated with Code Pink and a lot of other things and, and is just like a, a really honest, independent candidate. We had her. We had, uh, I think, Ralph Nader. He's always running, and we could have chosen him. Any of those people would have changed this country for the better. Ron Paul, in my opinion, would have gone the farthest uh, because his sort of ideas are the ideas that we really need right now. Not that he's perfect, but, you know, it, you know, see, he had some really good ideas about ending the wars, ending the empire, instituting sound monetary policy. I mean, those are the things that we needed. And, and people didn't choose him. They didn't choose Kucinich. They didn't choose anybody who was anti-war uh, or, you know, pro-accountability uh, in government. They chose this guy who was just spouting words. And that's all he's been doing, folks, is just spouting words and doing the opposite of those words okay and that's that brings me to my second point about Obama the, the important thing that's happened is Obama just won the Nobel Peace Prize now think about that for a second uh, all of the pundits are saying he won the Nobel Peace Prize because of his words not his actions okay now I remember the time when if you said one thing and you did the opposite, you were a hypocrite. Okay? Now if you say one thing and you do the opposite, you're a Nobel laureate. Does that make any sense? You know, Obama's pursuing multiple wars. He's massacring civilians with radio-controlled airplanes. And he's winning. He's the most peaceful person in the world. Is that true? Is You know, have we come to that point where the most peaceful person in the world is in charge of the most massive military apparatus in the world, invading and occupying multiple countries for no or no reason or for, for lies, and massacring civilians at wedding parties with drones. Is that the Nobel laureate in 2009? <laughs> is it the Nobel War Prize now? Or is it the, no, the Nobel Hypocrisy Prize? I mean, what kind of... I mean, this totally it's not worth the medal that it's mounted on now. I mean, it's just a lie, this Nobel Peace Prize. It's a lie. There's no way he should have that. Unless he actually, you know, pulled out of Iraq and Afghanistan and Pakistan and, you know, and, and started um, actually living up to his words. You know, it, it surprised me when the American people... Uh, you know, as much as they have suffered and been lied to, that they would choose words over actions. But it's absolutely incomprehensible to me that the Nobel Prize would be awarded to somebody on that basis. I just can't imagine it, but it just happened. Thanks for watching.